we couldn't wear jewelry, we couldn't wear shorts, we, we couldn't wear pants, we couldn't wear, we couldn't pierce our ears. There are some natural hair styles that we couldn't wear. This is heaven small because if we are the only ones going to be there, heaven must be really small. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? This is Lady Renee Thomas James and welcome back to my channel. Hello, darlings. How are you doing? So if you are not already following me on all my social media, it is Lady Renee Thomas James. Follow me on YouTube and Facebook subscribe to my YouTube follow me on Facebook and Instagram so as you can see by the title this one is going to be not challenging but maybe a little bit emotional for me so as you can see I'm wanting to talk about growing up in the Caribbean Apostolic Church and I put in Caribbean because believe me it's different and I am assuming that it's different wherever you go in the world different regions in the world it is different and I just want to give my experience and a comparison with when I moved to Canada it was a bit of a shocker in the Christian community so stay with me if you're interested <laughs> okay, so growing up in the Pentecostal or the Apostolic faith, um, they some some of them as a denomination they differentiate. It's like it's either you know Jesus only or no Jesus only. It it is in my opinion, looking back, very segregated, very segregated, and. Growing up in the apostolic faith, you know, we couldn't wear jewelry, we couldn't wear shorts, we, we couldn't wear pants, we st they, some, they still can't do it. Um, we couldn't wear, we couldn't pierce our ears. Um, there are some, we only could keep our hair natural. There are some natural hair styles that we couldn't wear. And I remember we couldn't wear fine cane rose or cone rose as they're talk I'm calling it today. Fine corn rose or fine plaits or if you decided to wear your hair in fine cornrows or fine plaits you couldn't take part you know in certain activities or certain positions in the church that is a real thing it's a real thing but for me that was my norm it was my norm and when that's your norm you don't know any different you know you don't know any better you embrace it but <laughs> the more I grew in the apostolic faith, the Caribbean apostolic faith. I realized that, you know, I had questions. I had questions. At one point in time, you know, my pastor blatantly said over the over the pulpit that, you know, Adam didn't sin. Um, Eve, Eve was the one who sinned and I'm like, mm, so we are blaming women now. And as a child, I remember just having a lot of questions. When I was able to think for myself, I'm just like, I have questions. Why can't we do this over here? What's wrong with piercings? What's wrong with shorts? What's wrong with you know a shorter skirt that's not touching your ankle? Or at one point in time it went up to you know um, mid calf and then it went up to below your knee. Or why do we see the other denominations? Why do we see them as you know different? Or why do we segregate or separate ourselves from them? Why do we preach in our Pentecostal or Apostolic faith that they are going to hell and we are not? Not. and he questions like heaven small because if we are the only ones going to be there heaven must be really small and you know having my questions what I heard for the most part is well these are the rules and we live by the rules we don't go against the rules because going against the rules means going against um, the leaders and going against the leaders is going against the Bible. I'm like, okay, so what is the basis for some of these, you know, rules? And, you know, the more I got shut up, <laughs> because I mean, you know, I'm a child that I have questions, right? So the more, you know, the, the older I grew, rather, I'm like, there are certain things that just didn't sit well with me. And the older I grew, I'm like, I saw certain things that. You know seem to go against the Bible but we're not spoken of spoken of for example you know why are <laughs> married ministers getting involved with you know other single sisters or vice versa why is that happening and being swept under the rug why is nobody talking about this 
why is it that some people are put out literally out of the church or some people are demonized while other people's sin go unpunished or go unseen or you know pushed aside and let me tell you parents be careful and it's not bashing the church or anything this is for us to have an open and honest conversation about the things that we see and we tend to push aside parents when your children have questions try to have an answer a concrete answer that makes sense because what you're doing is you're not raising children you're shaping adults and for me when I hit teenager I the questions that I had started you know bringing frowns or start, started putting frowns on the face on faces which in turn you know those faces were not too happy with me and these are primarily leaders in the church and for me what happened was I was put down so much and I took it because I didn't know any better and it's so weird when your child feels as if they are being treated unfairly and they are unable to articulate that because that is that's what becomes their norm you know what become what also becomes their norm is how we look at the bible which you know jesus christ should be about love but what we preach is you know the wrath of christ how god seemed to be angry with everybody and everybody else seem seem to be going to hell and as apostolics who only look a certain way which is natural no jewelry you know no shorts no pants they are the only ones going to heaven and i'm like but heaven must be small heaven must be small and as a teenager the questions i had when they couldn't get answered or answered with reasonable concrete answers i started you know feeling hatred towards me in terms of who are you to be asking these questions who are you to question certain rules in the church who are you to want to dig deeper in where these questions or where these rules are coming from rather and that was when when you when you when you put <laughs> your your kids in a position that they are unable to answer questions or they are unable to ask questions rather what happens is you almost shut that child up and i i am like okay so i seem to be the black sheep so let's just shut up for the most part but then something happened while you know i was being shut up through my teenage years um i met my husband at 19 and for the apostolic faith we are not supposed to date i don't know how you find your husband but yeah we, we we court we don't date we court i'm not sure what that process looks like for most people because i went against the grain and i went against all the rules where that came or that is concerned all the rules all the rules um i met my husband at 19 we started a relationship and i had my first child at 21 out of out of wedlock and that is when i really knew the people i was surrounded by i got the worst faces ever the worst and i got chastised demonized my parents who were you know ministers got put down from their ministry into the congregation almost saying you know you're not worthy to sit on the pulpit with us because your child um who is living under your roof and you know 20 years old has a child out of wedlock so they were put down and i'm like <laughs> okay <laughs> and for some other reason i was at peace i was at peace as much as i was hurt i don't know how to explain it i was at peace watching everybody just unfold into who they really were right unfold into okay just pass me say nothing 
don't touch don't say nothing no nothing and there were a few maybe maybe a handful and I would say about five people in the whole church who came to me and said you know what Renee we love you regardless because really and truly if you are the one we're supposed to bring you back and Jesus Christ did not come for the saved he came for the unsaved like he came for the lost the lost he came for the, the lost sorry the the lost one he came for the one who is straying he didn't come before Christians he came for the ones who are not you know saved quote unquote and I took that and it was that these people were the least likely meaning the people who nobody pay attention to those were the people who showed love and the people who were on the pulpit the the ministers the and the elders the pastors the people with the quote-unquote positions are the ones who passed and had nothing to say and and that for me at 20, 21, I had her at 21, I got pregnant at 20. That for me was very telling about who I was surrounded by, how we interpret the Bible, how we live the Bible, and how we how we plan to win souls for Christ, right? And I sat back and I watched, and during that time, Marlon who is now my husband and we've been together for 21 years during that time he stuck by me like during that time is when I realized that wow you know I have a man beside me like you're not a boy not a male a man you know a, a daddy a father figure somebody who is somebody who I can look up to, somebody who I can, you know, well respect. I still went to church because that is what I knew and the things you know don't normally just leave you. So I still went to church straight up until I had the ch I had my daughter, with it, which is Asnet, maybe the Sunday before I had her I was at church. And he was the one who dropped me off, picked me up, helped me throughout the way and ensured that his pregnant girlfriend at the time was okay. and watching that unfold with a person beside me was just like irrespective of what i was going through was some somewhat calming helped me to be at peace with who i was as an individual and the person who i chose to have a child with because as much as we're not gonna say it's right because it goes against my belief right and i'm like i really chose you know a good one I went about it the wrong way but I chose a good one and once I came to that realization it's so odd what started happening before my eyes and I think I was still I was pregnant throughout the time and then had my daughter and I was still going because that's what you know you hold on to the things you know you very rarely let go and while going and you know he was always beside me marriages in the church started falling apart and this was odd to me because this is an apostolic church and we did not at the time they did not believe in divorce until one of their own had to get divorced hey that's 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 okay <laughs> but we didn't believe in divorce and marriages in the church started just falling 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 and I thought to myself how odd that you know these marriages that are now falling those were the people who you know pushed their nose up or at me didn't talk to me had nothing to say to me um, when I was pregnant and Marlon at the time was just there still there still still here you know still just a tower of strength we don't go through stuff we go through stuff I remember him saying to me once you drive me crazy but I want you to be beside me I want to look at you when you're driving me crazy I don't take those words lightly I took it and I said thank you and at the time sorry I got a little bit emotional at the time you know just watching the marriages fall 
I, I there was no glory in that there was no happiness in that however it was telling it was from on my end observing it was telling to the point where okay so I faltered and there was no love shown while you know you're living a lie because the truth is divorce don't happen overnight it doesn't and you know a few years after we dealt with that I, I didn't I just I just thought it odd and ironic and I let it pass and of course I stopped going to the church after a while well on and off here and there and we moved to we moved to Canada in 2013 and we when we moved to Canada I found a church that was close by its veteran gospel veteran veteran gospel in in the concert area and when I started the church it was very different you know culturally from what I was used to there was people in you know shorts and pants and you name it on a Sunday you know you would grab your coffee you'd have you know your coffee while you're listening to you know the Word of God in the apostolic faith there is no coffee having in the church no no you know people you know the average woman didn't wear a hat if, if she didn't want it she didn't cover her head because their interpretation of the scriptures were different right and I, I looked at it and I was you know ready to see everything that it wasn't you know everything that wasn't based on my upbringing and what I was met with was just love acceptance appreciation you know you know they were just grateful that I was there and I chose to be a part of their community I should mention that I was the only we were the only black um, family by the way um, so they were just happy that you know we were there and you know happy that their community is growing irrespective of what you know shade you were and all they I remember they showed love to the point that I thought it was weird and when I was able to articulate that this feels weird the love that I was receiving that's when I knew that's when I knew for sure that something had gone wrong in the previous 33 years of my life if I don't know how to receive love from my Christian community something is wrong and that love pulled me grabbed me kept me steady and sturdy and being a part of that community I learned how to love I looked at my family totally different um, I looked at my church community totally different I looked at Christianity different I looked at the Bible and biblical scriptures differently and something that stood out to me that we don't talk about often enough in the Christian community is how you know we often talk about the wrath of God but nobody or we rarely speak about how Moses saved a people by overcoming the wrath of God with love with love and you know biblical scriptures in that moment in the in the moment of being showed love had a whole different and new meaning to me righteousness and I'm gonna tell you in respect of whatever anybody tells you righteousness in the average Christian community is hard I found that righteousness became so easy like okay this is what we're supposed to do the things that are right think about the things that are pure honest true right that all of that became easy you know why because of who we are surrounded with what we teach what we preach which is primary love primarily love and I, 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 I thought it so strange, it was strange to me at the time that love really, we can really use love to conquer a lot of things. The truth is the average, the average apostolic can cuss you out. The average apostolic in the Caribbean, specifically Jamaican faith, they can, they can give you a good cuss out. You know why? Really and truly that's how we were raised. We're raised 
cursing out other denomination cursing out people who don't believe in Jesus only curse talking about them and we don't realize that this is what we are passing on to our children and I was determined not to raise my kids like that I mean my parents did an amazing job in terms of keeping us steady keeping us sturdy giving us good morals you understand me but primarily you have to look at the church even though it's in your household is different you have to look at who your kids are surrounded with that's your church you know brethren what are they teaching what are they really teaching by the way of living to your children to your family to you let us think about that for a second you know and looking back I'm like I, I, I can't I mm. it's kind of hard to go back to that setting because I am now put in a position where I know better you I love differently I see people differently I appreciate differently I am I, I have a compassion towards people you know I am passionate about different things I have more compassion towards my family you just you, you love differently and I just want to leave with you I know this is a little bit long my apologies I just want to leave with you if you have received nothing from this I'm not bashing anybody I'm saying look at your surroundings trying to when you when you open the Bible my father said when you open the Bible ask the Lord for wisdom knowledge and understanding maybe that's why I had so many questions and when you open the Bible and you ask the Lord for wisdom knowledge and understanding try to interpret the scriptures for you know from the perspective of love and compassion and ask yourself am I surrounded by love and people who are compassionate about each other people who are empathetic if not try to reevaluate where you are where you want to be and figure out how you're going to get there I love you and have a beautiful rest of the day